sabrosura pa ti que que. Hello, everyone. This is Pam, the Cafe con Pam, the bilingual podcast that features Latine and people of the global majority who break barriers, change lives, and make the world a better place. Welcome to episode 346 of Cafe con Pam. Today, we have a conversation with Dr. Kelly Duclou. Dr. Kelly has a PhD from USC, along with two master's degrees in education and educational psychology. She has a comprehensive teaching background that spans various subjects, such as math, science, and English, across all educational levels, from kindergarten to college. Having retired from the classroom, she now specializes in stock options trading and e-commerce business development on Amazon. Dr. Kelly's mission is to empower individuals to build generational wealth while leading a flexible mobile CEO lifestyle emphasizing the idea that one can make money using just a cell phone, laptop, and Wi-Fi. She shares her expertise through hashtag travel and trade, combining her global trotting experiences with profit generation. Notably, she's held trading retreats in various magical locations, including Puerto Rico, and has even extended her wealth strategies teaching to children through her Junior Stock Options Trading Academy, aiming to equip the younger generation with essential financial knowledge to secure their financial futures. <laughs> Listeners, this conversation with Dr. Kelly was a lot of fun, and I will say we had some technical difficulties. So we had to go from one program to a different one. And so you might notice kind of like a shift in the audio because we had to improvise due to tech issues. And nevertheless, the content that Dr. Kelly shared with us is really, I think it's useful, if, especially if you're a mother and have young children and live in California because she shares what she did. So her kid graduated college at 15 years old with three degrees, which that alone blew my mind. So <laughs> definitely, if you're curious, even if you're a tia, a tío, abuelita, you know, if you're curious, there might be, this is she, Dr. Kelly shared about doing this in California. However, it may work for other states. We don't know. And it's really fascinating. Of course, what's going to happen with the stock market and how she teaches people what to do. Dr. Kelly, welcome to Cafe Con Pam. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. How are you doing today? I am awesome. Thank you for asking. So tell us, where are you tuning in from? I'm tuning in from Puerto Rico. Fun. Well, I'm in San Diego, and we have a lot of rain today. Yes. So I hope you are enjoying the sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is I'll be in California. I'm coming to visit my family in a, um, in about a week. Uh, about a week or so, I'll be in California and to visit family. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. After the water, good choice. You picked a great date. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the question that we always ask is what is your heritage? Okay. Okay. Um, I am African-American. Um, I have done my research and found out that my people come from Cameroon, West Africa. Uh-huh. And uh, my last name is Declou, which is French. And I did the research on that, my family tree, and found out that there was actually a Jacques de Clou that came over from France and landed over in um, New Orleans uh, back in like 1850, 60, something like that. <laughs> wow. So it was Cameroon, France, and then U.S.? No, Cameroon, West Africa for oh. the African-American part of my family. And then, oh, and then you the, have for French the clue, the white part of my family. Yes, yes. Oh, that's so interesting. I'm so glad you were able to trace it all, all the way back. Yeah, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. So I can't wait to go visit Cameroon, West Africa now. So I, I've been, uh, my goal, one of my goals is to go to all 195 countries. And I'm at 60, number 60 right now. 
Wow. So I can't wait to get there. Yeah. So yeah. you have what, like 30%, maybe more? I don't do math. 30%. That's right. Yep, 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 yep. Almost 30%. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's bring us back to your story. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California, so in the Inland Empire, and um, went to school out there um, in a city called San Bernardino, California. And uh, then I went to UCLA, so I grew up and went to college there and uh, started teaching there in L.A. So, yeah, that's that's where I grew up, mm -hmm, Southern California. Why do you have so many degrees? <laughs> Tell us about all your degrees. You know what? I, okay, the answer to the question is because I, I truly love learning. I truly love learning. You know, I mean, I could have as many, I mean, I could just keep going. I, I really just, am, I'm a student of life, but um, I was actually supposed to be a medical doctor. I wanted to go to school to be a brain surgeon. So I went to wow. UCLA. I was pre, yeah, I was pre-med. My uh, major was psychobiology. And um, when I stopped, when I finished UCLA, I decided to um, take the test for um, medical school, the medical college admissions test. I wanted to take it a second time, you know, to increase your scores and do better. OK, so while I was studying for that, I said, OK, the student loan people are coming after me. So let me go ahead and uh, do something so I can make money in the meantime. Guess what? That meantime changed my life because I started teaching science in South Central L.A. and I absolutely loved it. I loved it. And I remember having to have that conversation with my mom and dad. Uh, uh, I'm not going to become a medical doctor because I fell in I fell into teaching and I love it. Uh, is that going to be a problem for y'all? <laughs> 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 and my mom, she was like, baby, do whatever makes you happy. Whew, amen. <laughs> so from there, um, I went back and got my uh, first um, uh, master's degree in education with an emphasis in counseling. You really went into teaching. I did. I did. I did. And so then I went to USC to get my PhD in education and I got a second master's degree in education and my doctorate in educational psychology and counseling. So, so yeah, I, I went all the way in. <laughs> Do you come from a family of doctors? Like it was, is that why you wanted to be a doctor? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no family of doctors. I would have been in terms of medical doctor. I would have been the first, but I was the first PhD. So, but yeah, no, it was just one of those things. And you know what, if I can be completely honest, when I, by the time I realized, you know, that I wasn't going to become a medical doctor and I wanted to go down the other road, I said to myself, what is the highest degree I can get? And the highest degree you can get is a PhD. And I honestly said to myself, I want to have a Ph.D., not because it's going to make me more money, not because it's going to get me a better job, not because, you know, of any of those things. I honestly wanted to get a Ph.D. because I wanted to be a black woman with a Ph.D., the highest degree in the nation. That's why I got it. Yay. You have two masters and two doctorates. Two masters, but one PhD. One PhD. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, yeah, got it. Yeah. And so this whole journey of just continuing learning, how did your parents take it? Because you had a conversation with them before when you changed, switched gears, and then you kept learning. What do they say? Yeah, they were just like, okay, hey, whatever makes you happy, go. Nice. <laughs> we're, we're here to support so whatever you want to do go for it so they're they're really supportive they're very been very supportive yeah yeah and then and then come to find out my older sister she got her phd yay yeah so now my parents have two daughters only two kids two daughters and both of them are doctors that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome super cool yeah so, that's really cool yeah. You went into teaching. That was your thing. You loved it. And how did you get into the stock market? Great question. So 
um, I have to go backwards in time to tell you what happened. So okay. when I first finished UCLA, back when I was uh, probably 25, 26, 27, somewhere around there, um, I saw this book about investing in the stock market. And so I bought the book. It's, let's say 1997. I think I was 27 years old. And I learned just enough to learn what to do, but to lose all my money. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Because at that time, the only people who were teaching the stock market were people that didn't like look like you or I. Right. Okay. So on top of that, um, and top of it's on top of the uh, cultural difference. There was also a twenty thousand dollar education fee at that time, mm. and I didn't have twenty thousand dollars for education. I mean, just started teaching, you know. Right. And my teaching salary, my first year teaching salary, was twenty seven thousand nine hundred dollars. So the whole program. <laughs> Right. So I just said, okay, I'm going to study the book. You know, I'm a, I'm a student. So, okay, I can study the book. I can read the book. I can read it 5,000 times. I can learn what to do. Okay. So I did that. So I learned the steps of what to do. However, I never learned the a strategy behind it. Right. Why you do it when you do it. Exactly. Okay. So that was that many years ago. So now then I go off into my regular life and now around age 48, 48, because I'm 53 now, okay. around age 48, I see somebody who um, on Facebook who I don't know. And they're saying, hey, you know, you should learn how to invest in the stock market. There's this guy who's teaching it. And the guy who was teaching the class, he was like, okay, I'll take a deposit of $500. Okay, I got $500. And so that's how I got back into it. Now, the other part of the story is let me tell you why. And here is the backstory. As I was teaching, and as you're, you're clear and your audience is clear, I love teaching. Absolutely love it. I, at that time, I was teaching juveniles in juvenile hall who were locked up. Whoa. And I had, I had the girls unit. And I love, as you can tell, I love teaching. My Students know I love teaching. They can feel it. They, they, they appreciate everything. So here's the story of what happened. Because you teach juvenile hall, you get girls, you get kids coming in every single day, you know? Yeah. And so I had my regular class. Everything's going fine. I have 15 students in the class. I get a new student in the class. She's about four feet, 11, and eight months pregnant. Oh. 16 years old. Yeah. On her second day, she decided she wanted to fight me. Oh, pregnant. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm standing at the board teaching and she, for whatever reason, gets up out of her seat and starts approaching me. Oh and I look at her. Yeah. And I tell her, you need to go sit down. And she keeps coming. And I say to her again. You need to go sit down because she's getting closer to me. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had a whole out of body experience. Because what went through my mind was, OK, I have a son I need to get home to. Um, this child is going to fight me. She's pregnant. She's a child. She's this. But my my safety is going to be Im impacted right now. Right. So I had to I had to stand up because I'm already standing up. But I had to posture myself like, look, you need to go sit down. Mm. I said it twice. I had to give her the whole posture, the the universal yeah. symbol of what are we going to do right now? Right. <laughs> right. And here's what happened. It was not it was it was nothing but an, an act of God because all of my other students got up at the same time and they all came and hugged me at the same time. Oh my gosh. Wow. And it stopped her because she realized that I had the backing and support of all these other girls. Mm -hmm. And it snapped me back to, okay. <laughs> right. You know? Right. So... Wow. So that was a major thing that that changed my mindset because 
what happened after that, believe it or not, was I was called on the carpet by the district office. And they told me, well, you should have did this and you should have did that and you should have did this and you should have done that. Mm. But did they give you training, though? <laughs> right. And I said to everybody in that room, I said, let me ask you a question. One, number one, when was the last time you were even teaching in the classroom? And number two, how did you respond if you ever had the situation where a student was about to attack you? Do you know everybody in that room was absolutely quiet? Mm. And that's when I said to myself, okay, I need to get out of this. Because as much as I love teaching, I'm not going to be able to stay in this and retire at 65 and ride off into the sunset there. This is not going to work. Yeah. Now, that was back in 20, let's say 2012. And we all have seen YouTube videos of kids throwing chairs at teachers and fighting teachers. We've seen oh that God. now. Yeah. But I was able to foresee it long time ago. And that's why I said, I got to get out. I got to get out. For sure. Uh, I have my safety and my life jeopardized, especially when the administration is not going to support me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what did you do? So I, I decided to get out of teaching. I decided to get out of teaching. Wow. Yep. I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I, I think that is so pivotal for everybody in the audience, and this is a moment I want everybody to think about, we all, no matter where we are, have had moments where we knew that the situation we were in was not the right situation for us. Mm -hmm. We all have had those, whether it was a coworker that said something and make us feel uncomfortable, whether it was a boss, whether it was a relationship that we were in, that we knew we this doesn't really feel right. We all have had those moments. But yeah. what happens is we we just like, OK, no, you know, I'll just deal with it. And but we know our spirit is telling us this isn't the right spot for you. Yes. And if we don't listen, they keep repeating. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why for me, I realized that was my story. That was my my evolution story for how I became a teacher in the stock market. I love that. And I love that you took action the moment you got that nudge that was like, this is not it. How long have you been teaching at that point? How many years? Oh, my goodness. Um, From 90, I started teaching in 96. I think 97, 95, 95. And that was 20, 2012. So almost 20 years, almost. Yeah, almost. almost 20 years. Yeah. Was it hard for you? Or was it yeah. something that you were like, you know, this is it. I don't want to deal with it. Or mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. So that was a pivotal moment, right? Like that's when when you your spirit was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. From that moment until you fully stopping, did you make mm -hmm. a plan? Did you like cold turkey? We're like, we're done. What was the next step? <laughs> um, I did not make a plan. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I need to get out of here. And I, I think I just did a scissors, big scissors cut. And I just... Stepped out there on faith of, I know this is not safe for me. I need to leave. Yeah. Were you already playing in the stock market? No, not at that point. Mm -mm. What was no. the next step for you? What was the plan? How are you going to live? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so great question. Um, so I had, you know, luckily I had um, a little bit of money saved up a little bit, not even a lot, but um I was able to be with family, stay with family. Thank God, you know, um, so that that was a huge blessing. What happened in the interim was um, I took my son to a um, seminar, the Les Brown Get Motivated Seminar. Mm -hmm. And let me let me let me give you a little tweet, uh, a little spread real quick. So I because I'm a teacher and because I always find ways to teach in a way where my clients or students pick things up easily mm -hmm. because I am that kind of teacher. And I'm, that's, that's my gift. I could teach calculus to a six-year-old. I'm just, that's my gift. Um, I had found, and because I was teaching 
kids who were locked up or on right. probation, I found a glitch in what I call a glitch in the matrix. And I found a way for the kids to graduate early from high school. I know. I want to talk about your son. <laughs> so <laughs> when I found that out, I said, OK, well, let me see if this glitch in the matrix really works. So I took my son, who was 11 years old at the time, and I said, uh, let me put him through this curriculum that I'm creating mm -hmm. and see if he can pass. Well, when he was 12, he graduated from high school. Wait, he was 12 and he graduated high school at 12. Yes. <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> How does a 12 year old take your mom, you know, saying, hey, you're in eighth grade. We're like going to just transition you into graduating high school and then going into college. Yep. How did he yep. take yep. it? He was like, uh, he was excited because it was something new and different, right? And he was cool about that. Um, and he was like, oh, I don't have to go to school anymore. So he thought in terms of, I actually made him go continue finishing out the eighth grade, going to high school, going through the, because I wanted him to have the social experience. experience. Right. Yeah. But as he was going to the regular school during the day, in the evenings, he was going to college. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Yep. So, yep. yep. so your kid, instead of. And maybe he did. Did he do like extracurricular activities like football, basketball, you know, like sports and? Yeah, he did all that. He played, he was a baseball, he was on the baseball team. He wanted, he loved baseball. He played uh, football, all the, all the stuff the regular kids do. Whatever he wanted to do, he did it. You know? While going but to college. Was, while going to college in the evenings. That's right. So... This glitch in the matrix, is it a way of studying? Is it a curriculum? It's actually, okay, so I'm going to give your readers the, you're in California. So yeah. everybody in California, this applies to you. I've looked in other states to figure out what the equivalent is in other states. And I haven't been able to find it because I wrote a book about it. And then I said, well, let me see if I can have a book to help everybody in other country, in other states. And I haven't found it, the glitch yet. But here's the secret. Here it is right now. In California, there's a test called the California High School Proficiency Exam. Anybody who takes that test and passes it is done with high school. What? Okay. And here's the amazing part. The GED, which everybody knows of, the GED has five sections. This test has two, two, two sections, two, 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 two. So if you take those two sections, math and English, and you pass it, you're done. You don't have to do history. You don't have to do science. You don't have to do arts. None of that stuff. Two sections. That's it. That's fascinating. <laughs> we could literally talk about this for like three hours, except yes. it's wild. So, <laughs> and he, yes, yes. so he finishes high school at 12, and then... He finishes college at 15. Yes. Yes, with three degrees. How? <laughs> but give me remember, I'm an educator. I, I, <laughs> I know how to do I know the I know the I have I know how to navigate inside the matrix, right? So yes. So I figured out how to get him to graduate in three years with three degree uh, three years with three degrees. So he actually so now now at the same time he's going to college at night he's still going to high school during the day high school and the same week as he graduated at 15 from the community college it was really cool <laughs> oh my gosh so i'm very curious because of course this yeah. is these are the years when humans are like at the most rebellious you know at like when they're exploring things when whatever parents say is like not the way how did you build that relationship with your son so he could do all these things? I started seeing my son when he was still in my in my stomach. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I would get I would when he was in 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 my belly, I would do math problems, I would do spelling, 
So I would say something like three plus two is five. And I would go three and I would tap on my belly three times plus no. two. And I would tap. Up. I did. I did. So he came out and he already do math. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And then I found this program. It was called, um, let me see what it was called. Um, Jumpstart, Jumpstart, mm -hmm. Jumpstart. And they have Jumpstart preschool, Jumpstart kindergarten, Jumpstart first grade, Jumpstart second grade, Jumpstart. They have this whole program. So I found this program and it's like, let me go ahead and buy this and just see what happens. That was back when we had CD-ROMs, computer right. CD-ROMs. Okay. <laughs> so I found this program for like four bucks. Right. And I was like, OK, cool. Now, my son was two at the time. So I put the program in. He was sitting on my lap and we'd go through the program. And, you know, programs are, are kiddies. They're, they're, they're dancing and there's a lot of um, uh, singing to get them, re you know, repetition mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So what I did was I always gave him the program that was two years ahead of where he the age he was. OK. Yeah. 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 So by the time he was. In kindergarten, he was doing jumpstart second grade. Wow. And when he got to first grade, he was doing jumpstart third grade. Okay. So he was always ahead. Yeah. Ahead. yeah. <laughs> Has he ever asked you now as an adult? Like, because frankly, that's not a traditional upbringing. <laughs> and so have you and him sat down and talked about like all of this, you know, like maybe as he meets friends or as he's talked to people his age, like probably his brain is very, very different. Have you and him talked about it? We've had several discussions about it in the sense of he's always been the youngest in whatever group he's in. Right. And so, you know, he's told me how that's kind of made him, um, what's a good word, um, stronger but it also made him a little meaner because oh. he was the youngest he would get picked on and he and here's the thing he knows his mom is very protective i was a straight helicopter mom i was that you know mm -hmm. so there was certain a lot of stuff he didn't tell me at the time because he knew that the helicopter would turn into right. a big bear and the bear would go ah you know all that kind of stuff right so a lot of stuff he'll tell me now that he's 24, 25, he'd be like, yeah, you know, I went through this and I dealt with this, you know, and I used to always wonder why his face would look so mean, mm. not knowing that, you know, he was getting ready for whatever he was dealing with, you know, for the football sure. team, he was the youngest, the basketball team, he was the youngest class, he was the youngest. So he was getting his game face on. For sure. Makes sense. Yeah. I wonder how that played out also with, with the other kids as he was navigating all of this. So interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Let's take a quick coffee break and then we'll come back to your story. <laughs> Dr. Kelly, do you drink coffee? I don't. I don't. I'm more of a tea. I'm more of, I love hot chocolate and then I'll drink tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hot chocolate is my thing. Do you <laughs> drink like hot chocolate every morning? Is that like your morning beverage? No, it's my um my treat. Whenever I want to go get a treat, I'll go get hot chocolate with whipped cream with caramel sprinkled on top. <laughs> Fun. Do you have like a daily ritual for I mean you live in Puerto Rico, so it's warm. I mean, I would still drink hot coffee. But do you have like a morning <laughs> ritual or like a morning beverage? I don't. I don't. I get up and I jump into the stock market and I just call you market said go. Let's see where the money is. And you're in East Coast time. So what time is your because I know like when you play, when you hang out in the stock market, you have to get up super early. So what time are you up? Well, what's beautiful about it is when I'm in California, the stock market opens at 6.30 a.m. And I'm right. not a morning person. In Puerto Rico right now, we're on AST time because they don't recognize uh, daylight savings times. So it's 10.30 when the stock market opens. So I get to Ooh. get up at 10 a.m. and just... Look outside, see the beach, uh, enjoy, look at how beautiful it is. Oh, now it's so time. I'm going to go get in the stock market. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. It's pretty cool. Well, on my end, I am drinking Four Sigmatic. We're back to Four Sigmatic mushroom coffee. It's 
I believe if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's probably one of the first mushroom coffee brands that came out and I started using them years and years ago. And I'm just drinking like regular think for Sigmatic and I have a code, stay shining, whoever wants to use it. It gives you 10% off, I think. It's nice. Amazing. I've never heard of a mushroom coffee before. Yeah, it's really cool. So it's regular coffee with adaptogenics. So there's lion's mane and there are, there's like other mushrooms. It's not psychedelics. So it's just mushrooms because that adaptogenics that help with the brain and focus. And, you know, I have ADHD. And so Four Sigmatic is the one coffee that actually has helped me with my focus and not without making me jittery. Oh, okay. Okay. That's awesome. It's like awesome. a brain trick. Really nice. Good. Okay. Well, let's get back to the show. Listeners, as you know, I'm a recovering procrastinator. And because of that, I'm often building ways to getting things done. Inside the annual Manny's Pass, we get to embrace our own unique ways of achieving. Together, in our weekly office hours and cafecitos, we'll find strength in our differences, accountability in our goals, and power in our voices as we heal our inner child through coaching and tapping. Your choice. Let's redefine productivity on our terms. Visit cafecompam.com forward slash money's pass and join us. Dr. Kelly, let's fast forward to you stop teaching. Your son graduates with three degrees. <laughs> How do you get back into the stock market? So you take the $500 class and then what? So the what I got in that class was the missing piece. Mm. And the missing piece was a strategy, right? Because anybody can tap and click and, you know, like, you know, this is what you do. You know, we anybody can robot, right? right to learn how to invest in the stock market. But if you're missing the strategy of like what you said perfectly a little while ago, when do I get in? When do I get out? What stocks am I going to use? If you don't know those things, then you're just throwing money out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I learned. That's what I learned. Yeah. So for $500, you learned it. Well, that $500 was the initial price. I still had to pay. the. It, it was like a payment plan. Okay. Yeah. 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 How did you like, because frankly, the stock market, if it's, I mean, you're a teacher, so you probably were able to like figure out ways to understand it. And yeah. if it's the language of money and stocks, if it's not something that you've grown up with or familiar with. It's really yes. foreign. It's like learning a whole new language. So how long did it take for you to get comfortable? I think it probably took from when I began to when my mentor said, you're ready to go teach people. It was six months. Okay. And you were at it every day? Every day. And what was the goal for you at the time? So when you, when you came across the class, like from the beginning and you were like, you know what? The stock's... Uh, they're back into my life. Was your goal to get back into it, to live off of this, to learn how to play with this? Did someone talk to you about the stocks? Like, or was it that like early, earlier book that kind of like planted the seed? So the answer to that question is I wanted to have something that would um, sustain me. I wanted to, instead of punching a clock, I wanted to be able to get up, do the stock market, make the same money, mm. okay, and then live. That was my goal. That was my goal. Awesome. And it took six months. Did you or did anyone? Because frankly, there's a lot of stock market conversation, but very like to your point earlier, you know, very little people that actually know the strategy, unless you are in the finance world, right. you know, like regular folks it's not something unless you've been taught it you know you're familiar with it it's not something that's natural did people tell you like dr kelly you're like go back to teaching what are you doing 
Was there judgment around? No. Oh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't because my whole thing was I I found the secret. I found the glitch in the matrix and I want to tell you, we found hey, another there's one. a glitch. That's right. I found another glitch <laughs> in the matrix. My first glitch produced this kid who's 15 with three degrees. Guess what this glitch can do? It can help you stop having to work a job you don't like when something is telling you, you shouldn't be there anyway. Mm. And so six months in, your mentor's like, you're ready to teach. And then you go into developing your program. How does that work? Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So I created a program and I uh, started figuring out what is the best way to teach a foreign language, like you mentioned before, in a way where people can pick it up easily. So what I was able to do was go back to my years of when I first started teaching, when I fell into teaching while I was studying for the MCAT, the reason why I loved it was because I figured out a way to teach kids science and math to kids who could care less about science and math. Right. So I figured out how to, how do I teach it where it's fun? How do I teach it where they want to come to school? How do I teach it where they get the information and they're able to retain it and pass it so they can graduate? So I use those same methodologies and frameworks, and I just took it from science to stock market, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. And so what's like one thing, one misconception that people have around the stock market that you're like, mm, actually, if I if you learn it this way, you're going to see it different. Oh, my God. I just did a webinar on Sunday, coincidentally, where I talk about the three secrets of the stock market. Now, I'll give you one, but if you want me to give you all three, I will. Okay, but the <laughs> one, the first one, the first secret is that it's hard. That's the first secret. It's not. Mm. And in the webinar, that was my se second secret. And I actually showed them videos of me going to three, no, four. I think I did four different um platforms right apps. apps on your phone and each video was 40 seconds or less and i said you open the app and you go right here click right there you see that click right there okay now after you click there you see this next page click right here okay cool and after you click right here you enter this number right here and then after that you click this button and after that you swipe up and it's done and i did it on four different apps in the webinar and people left going that was easy. She did it on four different ones, right? So if you can send a text message with a picture in it, mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you can play a, a game on your phone like Tetris or Sudoku or whatever, you can do this because it's not that hard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And how much, because the other misconception that I've heard is you need a lot of money. That's number three. <laughs> You're doing good. That's number three. And I actually showed them because what I do is I keep, um, I, I encourage my clients to keep what I call receipts. A receipt is a screenshot showing what you bought and a screenshot showing what you sold, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at those two things and see how much profit you made, okay? So I encourage all my clients to keep their receipts. So I asked several clients, hey, can I show your receipts? to the people on the webinar. And I had clients who sent me receipts of, they invested $138 and made profit. Clients who invested 118. I had a client who invested $8. I, you know what I'm saying? So it does not, I had a client who didn't put any money in the stock market and still made 32 bucks. Okay. <laughs> so that was the third secret is that, oh, it costs a lot of money. No, actually it doesn't. And I can show and see my strategies. I teach you how to get into the smart stock market without a lot of money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So for, because I heard also this, the people that are like, you know what? I have a 401k. I'll like, you know, I'm putting whatever percentage my company's matching. Like that's good enough. What would you say? I would say if somebody is matching you, definitely go for it. Yes. Then I would tell them, I have another program for people who do have 401ks. And the program starts like this. Call your 401k 
and ask them, what percent return profit did you get for me managing my money in 2023 and 2022 and 2021? And to ask them to give you a specific return. If they get, if they made 10%, tell me what it is. If it was 2%, tell me what it is. If it was negative 12%, tell me what it is. So that's the first thing I tell people to do. And when they come back with answers, their mind is blown, their eyes are wide because they found out that the 401k made 2% return or negative 12. Mm. So then I ask them, do you want to be in control of your money? Because they're in control of your money and they're not doing a good job. Right. I can teach you how to be in control of your money and make at least 12% a year, at least 12%. And then it's just a matter of somebody deciding to say, you know what, Dr. Kelly, thank you. Yes, let me pay you to teach me how to make at least 12% every single year for the rest of my life with my money that's sitting over there that they're wasting. I used, I don't have over 1K now, but when I was in corporate, I had one. Yeah. And I, if I remember correctly, you were, I, I was able to do, just do the investment type. So moderate aggressive mm -hmm. or conservative yes and that's yes. like as much as i could like change and shift uh-huh but there like if i remember correctly again it's been a long time yeah but i don't think i could change much you know it was all dependent on what they wanted to do based on my my risk Ooh. right and see that's what they tell us in the very beginning so when I tell my prospective clients, I tell them, hey, call them and ask them what is the percent return they're giving. And then the second question you need to ask them is, can I tell you what I want you to invest in? Mm -hmm. And if they tell you no, the third question is, I need you to, hey, how much is it going to cost me for you to give me my money? Because I can do a better job with my money than you can. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So Dr. Kelly, tell us where we can find you, all the places and spaces. I am on TikTok. So I am at uh, at Dr. Kelly. And there are, by the way, there are a lot of people who are impersonating me. I, I like, I guess I must have made it because they're, they're impersonating me and stealing my videos. I couldn't believe it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> if you, I, I currently have, let me pull this up right now on TikTok. I have, um, 131,000 followers. Nice. So if you see a Dr. Kelly profile that doesn't have that, it's only 800 followers. That's a, that's a fake that's not one. You. So <laughs> yeah, that's not me. Okay. Uh, also, uh, my, my website is stock options, trading academy.com. And I have a Facebook group of over 10,000 um, people. And the, the Facebook group is the Stock Options Trading Academy. So they're more than welcome to come. I love to have free information on the Facebook group. So once they join the Facebook group, answer the questions, they can go in there and they can actually search for the word lessons because I'm a teacher. They can search for the word, put lessons in there and they get all these free information about investing in the stock market. Amazing. Yes, yes. Super educational, obviously. Um, last few questions. Do you have a remedy that you want to share with us? Yes. I, I like to have people recalibrate their thinking in terms of money. Mm. And what do I mean by that? Um, we are, we are, trapped into the rat race at an early age right you know whether you're 18 and you finish high school or you're 23 and you finish college we're taught go get a job yeah as soon as we go get a job we start buying stuff with that money and then now we have to keep the job to pay for the car or the apartment or the house or whatever yep. and what happens then is somewhere around from 18 or 23, whatever age that is, somewhere from there to about 35, 36, 37, 38, we're okay. And then around 38, we're like, I don't like this job that I'm in anymore. But by that time, you have all these extra things that you've paid for. You might have some kids and now you're stuck in the job. But you're not living your true life purpose. Mm. 
So my remedy is take the time to figure out what do you actually, what can you get rid of in your life in terms of stuff that's going to be holding you to money, mm. right? So, because when you're beholden to the stuff that requires the money, then you're beholden to the job that gives you the money to pay for the stuff. Right. So the first remedy is figure out what you can, quote unquote, downsize. Okay. Because that now is going to let loose some of the chains that you have to this job that or this situation that is not doing, it's not serving your spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we, I truly believe, and, and I'm going to get to the gist of why I do what I do. I teach people how to invest in the stock market because I believe it's a long jump, but I'm here's my jump. If I can teach you how to make money in the stock market and it answers the problem of how you can get away from this job or this situation that's not feeding your spirit, then you can hop skip over to why you're here on this earth. Every one of us has a God-given purpose and a God-given talent. Mm. And if we're stuck in a job that's not suiting us, we're, we are... Um, we are sacrificing our time where we could be working on our God-given purpose with our God-given talent. We're sacrificing the time at this job mm. when we could be spending all of our time over here living on our purpose. That's why I do what I do. That's why I teach people what I do. I love that. Great remedy. Do you have a quote or mantra that you live by? Yes. And it is what you do today affects seven generations into your future. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. When I first heard that, it blew me away. It blew me away. Yeah. Scientifically proven. And seven generations backwards too. Frontward in fact and back. Yeah. I know. Yes. yes. Yeah, when you think about it, it's like, well, <laughs> let me behave. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right right fam right <laughs> um do you have a productivity tip trick or tool that you want to share with us i would say i would i want to encourage everybody to and and this is this is the one that's going to get you straight to the solution go get robin hood it is the simplest trading platform app out there yes it yes it is about the stock market but again now that you understand why I do what I do, go get it. Go get it. I mean, I'll be happy to send you my link so you can get started. But that's going to be the first entryway because Robinhood is the easiest app to learn on and how to invest in the stock market. So please, everybody, go get it because, it, first of all, they're going to give you a free stock, first of all, to get you started. And then second of all, you can start learning. I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's so many different ways to get into this game. And it's it's the freedom that we need so that we can make this world a better place by living our, our dreams and our purposes and all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm very curious because on your questionnaire, I, one of the questions is what would you ask for if the answer was yes? And you put $10,588,350,000,000. So, I'm curious as to why that very specific number. <laughs> oh my God. You remember that perfectly. Oh my goodness. The reason why the reason why I put that specific number is it goes back to the the quote what you do to, to you do today affects seven generations into your future. Mm. One of the things that I want to leave to my great 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 grandkids is I want to leave them a solid place where they can live so that they don't have to worry about being chained to a job to pay for a place to live. Mm -hmm. They have a place to live. Then all they got to do is worry about how to eat. Yeah. Right. But then they can start working on their purpose in life. And that number is what will get you there. That's the number. <laughs> yes. That's the number that's going to pay for the, um, the thing that the vehicle, because I believe that one of the vehicles is real estate. So I'm going to buy something so that I can put it in. Yeah. Put it into um, my family trust and therefore it stays in the trust always. And therefore all the family members can live there, you know, over time, generations, mm -hmm. of course. Right. But, the, sure. but it pays for itself with all the other people that live, you know, all the other renters and all that kind of stuff, you know? Totally. So, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a yeah. whole other conversation about trusts and, and real estate. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for coming to Cafe Con Pam. This was great. Thank you for sharing your story and your work with the world. This was awesome. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I had a good time. Yay. Everybody stay shiny. That was Dr. Kelly's episode, everyone. I would love to know your thoughts. Of course, I had so many questions about so many things. And I hope we asked enough, you know, to give you a little taste of Dr. Kelly's story and curiosity to go explore and figure out on your own how to do all the things, especially money, because the possibilities are there. Just like I'm still blown away <laughs> by the fact that her son graduated at 15 with three degrees. What? You know, it's, that's one thing that I would have thought, there's no way. And so this episode is one of those that if you're in a place of not possible, thinking that things are not possible, this is one that might give you that, like, you know what? It just might be. You want to listeners, if you are tuning in on audio, this is the time to leave a rating and or a review on Apple Podcast, on Spotify, on all the places and spaces, because it does help a ton. If you are on YouTube, this is a time to drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the things to make sure that you are the first to know when new episodes drop. Listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and for listening all the way here. I frankly, if you're still here, thank you so much. <laughs> Let's stay connected at Cafe Con Pam Podcast on Instagram and Facebook, cafeconpam.com. Check out the money's pass. And listeners, como siempre, stay shining. Sabrosura, pati, que, que.